Hi, in this slide I want to talk about uh, when we first come up with cost to serve math so that we can do net profit ranking reports and we go look at the extreme losers, we're going to get a lot of pushback from our, our old belief system and to a certain degree we're going to have to overhaul it. I suppose it might be not quite as dramatic, but as something akin to we're 1600 and we're in the Netherlands and some Dutchman who invents the microscope says, hey, let's take some spit from your mouth because nobody brushed their teeth on a regular basis and look at it under this microscope and see all the little creatures that are smaller than the naked eye that are crawling around in your saliva. You know, we wouldn't believe it. We'd think it was a trick. We'd be angry, uh, be scared. You know, it's just we don't we don't know what we're looking at. You know, maybe they're all symbiotic creatures and we need them to digest our food correctly, but we don't know that. So what happens is we go to the bottom of the report and we'll find, quote, our best customer or our most popular items, uh, you know, that are down there losing a lot of money because there's a structural flaw in the, in the, the cost to serve activity. So people want to immediately change the cost to serve model, and that's okay. What you might do is, is go back and say, let's look at all the cost assumptions and tweak them a little bit and so forth. But we realize that no matter what we do, super losers are super losers and super winners are super winners. And even if we're 75, 80% correct, because you can't necessarily be perfect, you know, on every single cost model, because it's not a, it's a dynamic world we're trying to model. Uh, whether we're losing 25,000 or 20,000 or 30,000 on a customer, we're losing. So what can we, and they're losing too. So what can we do to convert lose-lose to win-win? Um, generally, we start to realize that when we look at financial averages, they're ma basically masking the underlying uh, cross subsidies or realities that are going on. Um, we realize we're making a lot more uh, then we're reporting at an operating profit line. It's just that we have to take those excessive peak internal profits to cross-subsidize the losers, which we don't have to accept. In other words, you know, there usually is a way to turn a lose-lose relationship into a win-win. Um, and uh, instead of looking at 80% of the, of the uh, customers generating 20% of the sales or the way around, 20% of the customers generating 80%, We've seen in, in, in power law examples where, uh, you know, 10% of the customers are 100% of the operating profit or 5% of the SKU's items are 500%. So that provides us with super leverage. Don't freak out. Think, hey, by focusing, hyper-focused as a team, we can do even more in our best or absolute worst areas. So the, the next question is, well, okay, let's understand the root root cause of why super winners are super winners and super losers are super losers, because those are just still symptoms. Those aren't the root causes of why um, margin dollar versus cost is, is giving us a, a big win or a big loss. So once we get those insights, we come up with the plays that allow us to then get dramatic results, both uh, with super winners and super losers. Thank you.